I, uh, a sense of what he was saying. He was comparing the, the way the piece and the sound of the cello was similar to sort of the cacophony of the world. There can be a lot of noise or a lot of sort of stuff, but then, then as the sound continued, it then got calmer and calmer and calmer, and he said, and then finally, it became just clear light. So it was a very astute musical assessment that he made. I mean, it's like highly sophisticated, what he said, you know, just musically. It's fascinating to observe his thought process as he's sort of observing and experiencing the, the identical thing that I'm experiencing. It's a very comfortable space because I know he's feeling everything that I'm feeling and that he's with me. It started that way in 1996, and we spent six days together in this remote monastery in Kentucky. I'd never met him before. Right? So the cello then became like this sort of like this bridge between the two. And then I just had this sense that he, he was perceiving it as I was sensing it. It felt like heart and soul melded in addition to mind. And that was 18 years ago. Looking back, I was, I was a kid, just sort of holding on to my cello because being in his presence is, you know, it's a, it's a very powerful energy field. Um, and then to play in it, 